So the question is, on this fine Saturday morning that I hate going out to work on the weekends and I changed my entire job position at work so I wouldn't have to work on the weekends, um, but I'm working on the weekend because, um, oh, I worked last weekend too. We did that house wash and concrete wash on a Sunday. Put that video up on probably Monday. And so a lot of people will say things like, well, there goes the grass, there goes the, the plants, bleach is gonna kill it. Uh, so we'll go back there this th today and uh, video it because we're gonna mow it. So we'll see if the plants are dead. Um, I suspect they will not be because I have a wealth of knowledge and years of experience. But, and a twinkle in my eye, but that's not important. Um, I want to address the question that you guys constantly ask about uh, a Velky. Uh, and it starts with, hey Dan, if you get a Velky, you can mow so much faster. Um, and that is true. And I've had Velkies in the past. I've had a Velky when I had my 32 inch Encore uh, belt drive walk behind back in 2015, maybe. I had a Velky when I had my 52 inch John Deere with an incredibly underpowered 18 horsepower Kohler. 18 horsepower on a 52 inch deck. Hydro. John Deere really screwed the pooch on that one. Um, but I bought that mower really cheap and um, I got the, I, I sold it uh, not really cheap. So I just did a little bit of work to it. I think I might have replaced a spindle or something, uh, blades. I don't remember what I did, but uh, it had a mulch kit on it and it was a really fine machine but 52 inch, just ridiculously too big for what I do. But I knew the potential, I knew there was some money uh, to be made and uh, and I made it, so I was happy with that. But, now I got my dream mower, the 36 inch Hydro Walk Behind. It's the ideal mower uh, for residential lawns for what I do. It's, it's lightweight, uh, which is why I went with it. A lot of people wanna know, like, how come I didn't go with a stander? For the same price, I could've got a stander. No, for the same price, I couldn't get a stander. Um, not an Encore stander. And Encore is, or I'm sorry, um, Xmark uh, is a fantastic mower. Awesome warranty, the dealer's right here. I mean, it is the top of the line mowers. You know, it's like, Toro's a really good mower. Gravely's a really good mower. Xmark is that high level mower, a uh, really high level mower. So I wanted a commercial mower and I wanted the top of the line commercial mower. And I grew up with walk behinds. I like walk behinds. I'm comfortable with walk behinds. And they're about 300 pounds lighter than a Xmark standard because uh, I think it's like 130 pounds lighter than a 36 inch standard. 130 pounds, that's a lot of weight. Uh, and then you have to add the operator's weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, um, you know, you're talking 280 to 300 pounds uh, added to the turf that you're rolling on in our wet weather. So it just didn't make sense to me. Also, um, I don't know about standards, but from what I see, they're not as easy to work on as a walk behind. Like my walk behind, I grab a jack stand with one hand I grab the deck with the other hand, I flip the mower up, I shove the jack stand under it, and I can swap or sharpen my blades in no time at all. I don't need a floor jack, I don't need help, I don't need to use the ramp of my trailer. I don't need anything to lift the mower up. I can very easily lift my mower up. I can very easily pop a wheelie and hop a curb. Um, walk behinds to me are just more efficient, economical, a little bit cheaper, uh, lighter on the turf, and exactly what I want. So that's why I went with it. Nothing against standards or people that have standards, but I just don't think standards are the ticket for the yards that I mow. So that's why I went with the walk behind. Um, but now walk behinds can come with a Velky. Uh, you can get a Velky, a two wheel or a one wheel. I get a two wheel, so the wheels of the Velky track. So the wheels of the Velky track the path of the wheels of the mower so you don't have that one wheel in the middle making so many ridiculous looking lines I don't like that so getting a Velky uh, am I gonna get a Velky if I get a Velky the only Velky that I would get is one that pivots so you got these certain ones that have caster wheels that um, claim to be the shit they're not because what that does is when you connect that Velky to a walk-behind mower 
that walk behind mower now becomes about two and a half, three feet longer because the Velky doesn't pivot. So when you turn, you're kicking out beyond the handles, you know, as, as the handle of your mower comes around, you come around with it, which means you hit the house, you hit the fence. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of a hydro walk behind or a zero turn for that matter. Um, so I would have to get a Velky that would make sense. It would be the type that pivots in the middle, that swings. So when you turn, your feet actually point this way and it comes around like a, like a trailer. So that, that would be what I would need, um, first of all. Second of all, I don't need one yet. And I say that as I'm about to go do a field and I'm gonna film me doing this field and this field, we're gonna, you know, it's boring ass video. So we'll make a little music video before we get to the other two houses. But we're gonna film this and I'm gonna walk out this entire almost acre yard with my 36 inch. Um, now this is the largest property that I have that would make me say, damn, I wish I had a zero turn or damn, I wish I had a 52 or damn, I wish I had a stander or damn, I wish I had a Velky. Um, but for just this one property, I can't justify the expense of, of, of anything like that because my walk behind is exactly perfect for the rest of my properties. And so when you, when you think about the big picture, like I get all your questions, I understand your concern, and a lot of you guys don't know all my accounts, and you guys know what you know, and to what makes sense to you, a standard or a Velky or a zero turn would make more sense for me, in your opinion. And I appreciate that. But it's not the case. Everybody has different situations. Um, for example, one situation with me is I train for the marathon. Please donate www.dancevlog.com to the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, I, I train for the marathon. Walking is a great way of training. My Fitbit tracks my heart rate and my distance 24 seven. It tracks me sleeping. It tells me if I slept good, if I slept restless. It tells me how many times I woke up in the middle of the night. It tells me my resting heart rate, which is down in the mid 40s, by the way. Um, and it also tells me how much exercise I've gotten according to my elevated heart rate all day long while I'm being a recycling trash man, chasing recycling garbage cans down all around Tybee Island. And then it tells me my heart rate while I'm mowing lawns and I like to elevate my heart rate and walking is a great way to elevate my heart rate so that is also another reason why I'm okay with walking right now um, I'm healthy I can handle it I'm not hurt uh, and what and and I'm not spending four or five hundred dollars on a Velky that I would want the right Velky for this machine I just can't justify it yet I don't think there's a single backyard I would actually be able to justify putting a Velky on um, some front yards, yeah, but no, not when you're only mowing like two or three lawns a day after work. It just doesn't make sense. So that's why I don't have a Velky yet. Now I'm not saying I'm not going to get one. I'm just saying I don't need one right now. Okay. We're already toward the end of July. We're, we're like hitting what the 20, 20th of July. So we got August. And then in September, yards start slowing down. In October, they fall on their face. And November, you get your last cuts of the season in. And then maybe some cleanups here and there through winter. So I can't really justify buying a Velky at this point. Um, it would take it would take almost uh, two and a half, three weeks of side hustle income out of my pocket uh, just to have the Velky just to ride around on just a few places. One of them being this the lot so we're gonna do this lot Ooh, the sun let me pull up in here and I, I park in the lot mostly I mow half the lot then I move my truck there we go so I'm gonna mow this lot and the biggest problem that I have with this lot isn't walking it's this really tall crap See the seedlings? See the stalks and the seedlings? Having a Velky doesn't allow me to go faster when you're dealing with that, and we deal with that a lot around here. Um, if, you, if you go fast, you're gonna, you lay the stalks down with, with the deck, 
and then the back of the deck holds the stock down and the blades never have a chance to cut it. So you have to slow down to give the blades a chance to vacuum the stock up and then cut it. A Velky isn't going to make me go faster. A Velky is going to make it where I don't have to walk. But we've established I like walking. I like the exercise. So that's why I don't have one. It's not to, it's not to say I don't need it. Um, it's not to say that if I get a Velky then I should have got a stander. No, that's not the case at all. It's just I don't need it yet. Does that make sense? So that's all. That's, that's the reason why. I encourage you to get one if your property is needed and you put it on and take it off usually with quick connects or just a pin and a you know a quick pin and then pull the bar out and you can drop your Velky and leave it on your trailer or whatever or leave it at the gate go in the backyard whip around walk and then come back out put your Velky back on 30 seconds total you know and then load your mower back up when you're done I, I mean do it you know what I'm saying do it um, there's nothing wrong with it I just don't need it so that's all um, this is going to be hard to film because the sun is low in the sky, so I'm not sure what we're going to do, but I'm going to try to set you guys up with some sort of a uh, little music video here. Let you guys watch me walk this close to an acre lot, and uh, we'll take it from there. So this is the stocks I'm talking about. See these bean stocks? <laughs> and what happens is... You know, your deck is, on, is is so wide, like from front to back. So your front, the front of your deck comes and lays this over. And then before it has a chance to pop up and get cut, the back of the deck grabs it. And so if you go over it so fast, you just lay it over and it pops right back up after you mow. If you go slow, then there's a chance that it'll, the wind from the blades will suck it up and get that chop. Um, most of the time it doesn't and that's when you got a double cut now when you're doing a field like this sometimes you can leave some of them up because all we're doing here is we're just making her legal with their HOA in this area this is a very very I mean look at these houses <laughs> these people do not want rodents and stuff like that in open fields you know what I'm saying because then snakes and shit living here and you got a lake back there behind us there's a lake right there and so you're gonna have issues you're gonna have water moccasins and shit coming up so the HOA gets on my customer pretty hard about this property um, and I'm actually a week late from doing it I should have done this last week so we're gonna go ahead and just mow it down but uh, my 36 inch will work fine. It takes about 45 minutes um, for me to just walk this out. So I'm gonna get a little cardio. And then um, I will show you guys at the end of this video, I'll pull up my, my phone on my phone. I got the Fitbit app and I'll show you guys how it tracks my heart rate um, doing this yard.
this actually might be the best angle for you guys to see some of the, the stalks that are still sticking up. Maybe it doesn't even show on video because it's not that bad at all. I mean, sporadically at this point, when you go and I like when I weed eat that pole and that stop sign up there, I can just run around with the weed eater and just and just walk around, and just chop it down a little bit if it mattered. But like I said, this field it doesn't matter as long as we're mowed and we're we're legal with the HOA. That's all she cares about. Um, she just doesn't want to get that notification, and then they're going to charge her like 200 bucks to send a company here to do it. So. Me doing it like this, kind of half-assed, but it saves her a lot of money and she's a lawn service client and a pressure wash client. And so I'm just taking care of her. I'm just knocking it out. Not worried about pride. I don't care if people see these little stocks sticking up. It means nothing. We're just keeping her legal and making a little money and getting some exercises. I'll show you soon. I'm gonna finish this area now off camera and then I'll be back to show you my Fitbit. We'll talk about it. All right, I just finished. I'm gonna let my heart rate calm down a little bit so you can see where we started where we worked and then where we calmed down. So I'm gonna slowly go weed eat them poles, uh, be done with those and then we'll be back and I'll take you on a tour of my Fitbit. So the Fitbit Versa is what I have. I got it at Walmart. Uh, they're like 300 bucks, 299 or something like that. I got it on rollback for like 259 and then I put a two or three year warranty on it. I don't remember. Uh, but I paid like less than 275, 280 out the door with a warranty. Um, and it, you just wear it on your, on your wrist, just like a regular watch, like an Apple watch, like my Garmin watch, which I cracked the screen and then I, I uh, ruined it. So it was and it was I was beyond my warranty so whatever I just I got something else um, I almost went with the iPhone or the iWatch but too many people have too many problems with their trying to talk in it and stuff and I guess that's the only thing that I would want to get the iWatch for would be so you don't have to grab your phone when somebody texts you you can actually respond right on your watch and I thought that was kind of cool but when I get messages from people that have that the messages are so screwed up and they're constantly apologizing that their watch is hearing what it wants to hear. Much like when I have Bluetooth on and I talk text while I'm driving. I have to turn my Bluetooth off and just talk into my phone and it'll come out much clearer with the proper words. When I Bluetooth talk, it gets, the Bluetooth hears what it wants to hear. It's almost like you have to set Siri up with your Bluetooth on and then, but then if you don't have your Bluetooth, then the phone will be screwed up when you're talk texting. So I've seen too many people with problems with that iWatch and I was just like, man, it's just not worth it if, if that's, you know, I can read text messages, I can see who's calling me. This thing 100% tracks your heart rate 24 seven. Um, it tracks your sleep, which I don't believe the iWatch does, but this tracks your sleep cycles, which I'll show you real quick. Um, and it also, um, from the moment you wake up, to the, to the moment you go to bed, it also tracks your heart rate and it tells you when you're in fat burn zone, cardio zone, which is the next level, and um, peak zone, which is like your like 90, like 85 to 100% of your maximum heart rate, something like that. 
Um, that's going to be like if you're doing wind sprints and stuff like that. Um, but your fat zone, you know, to figure all that out, this isn't a fitness channel, but but I'm 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 fit I, and I follow fitness and I studied it for years. To figure out your maximum heart rate, you want to take 220 and minus your age. All right, so that's going to be your maximum heart rate. And then to be in your fat burning zone, you want to be between 60 to 70 percent of your maximum heart rate. All right, so now you're exercising moderately. A good walk, uh, a very, very, very slow jog. Um, it's going to be your fat burn zone. Swimming could get you, or get, is going to be your cardio zone. Swimming, jogging is going to get you into, and cycling is going to get you into your cardio zone. That's going to increase your heart rate to above the 65 to 70 percent. That's going to be more like 70, 75, 80 percent. And then sprints, that's going to be your peak, and that's going to be your maximum cardio. Um, that you need to get with a trainer and a doctor and all that crap. All right, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. And I'm not going to pretend to be. I just know me, and I'm trying to be in fat burn zone as much as possible. Um, and so this Fitbit tells me exactly what I'm doing all day long. So let me turn my phone on for you, and I'm going to use the app. Let me put my code in, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to continue to talk to you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and screen capture, and we'll do a little picture in picture, and you guys will be able to see my iPhone. Uh, in its entirety what you know what I'm doing okay so last week here we go let me close this down last week you can see 76.49 miles of some form of cardio activity between fat burn cardio and peak let's take Monday of last week 19.81 miles my heart rate was elevated and you can look at the bar graph and you can see that I was really elevated from basically 6 in the morning you can see I was I was I've been rolling all the way through until about six o'clock at night, and what that is right there is cutting grass and also doing the garbage route that I do. So it's really cool how this works. It constantly tracks your heart rate from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. But more than just that, it also tracks your sleep cycle, and you can see right here it says I slept last night for nine hours and twenty-one minutes. And then it'll break it down and it'll show you 8 hours and 15 minutes of light sleep, 25 minutes of deep sleep, and 41 minutes of REM sleep. So this will help you understand how you're sleeping at night and if you're getting good rest. And it also says that in that 9 hours and 21 minutes, I was awake for 1 hour and 23 minutes. So I actually got about 8 hours of rest last night. Interrupted a few times. It wasn't solid. But it was, it was interrupted a few times, 9 hours, 21 minutes, interrupted a few times to wake up. And then you can see why did you wake up, like at what time. And there's the stages. The red is when I woke up. Um, 3 in the morning, I let my dogs out. A few times I woke up. One time to check on my kids. Uh, so, all right. So that's the Fitbit Versa. You can find it at Walmart. I'll try to link to it in the description below. It's really a kick-butt device, and it shows you exactly what you're doing all day long what your activity was, whether it was cardio, whether it was fat burn, or whether it was peak. And I can tell you this, to know that, take 220 minus your age, 60 to 70% of that number that you come up with is gonna be cardio, 70 to 80% is gonna be fat burn, above 80% you're peaking your heart out and you're really getting some awesome cardio and fat burn and it's gonna last for a while when you're done because everything's still going. Um, so that's the Fitbit Versa, really a badass little tool, uh, but let me go ahead and get out of this. And so we're back. All right. Um, definitely a cool tool to have. And if you think about it, when you watch my video and all these people that were running back and forth and, and biking and walking and running and doing all the things that they were doing while I was mowing, if it shows because um, I got it fast forwarded so much. Um, if it shows, you could see that I was doing what they were doing, but I'm getting paid to do it. And I don't have a Velky. I didn't pay $400 to not get paid to exercise. So I actually got paid to exercise. I really enjoy it. Um, and I enjoy it even more now that I have the Fitbit. Uh, it's a constant reminder of, hey, you're doing it. You're out there. You're getting it done. You're exercising for your health and for the marathon. And I mean, and that's to me, it's really important. So. Uh, the field's done. We got the trimming done. Uh, let's get out of here. Okay, so we're here at the house that we just pressure washed. Sorry about the sun last week. So here's the sidewalk difference between the one we did 
and my customer that we did not do and we discussed why I don't go all the way here so you can go back and check that video uh, as to why but to answer the comments that people will make without doing any bit of research or questioning or they just make stupid comments like oh there goes the plants or there goes the grass well there's the plants <laughs> and the grass is too far away to make a difference but you see it doesn't hurt the plants there's no there's no dead leaves on the plants it's just not strong enough could it it could dang the sun's killing you I know it is could it hurt the plants yes if you mix it too strong of course but I don't I follow a recipe and I share that recipe with you guys all right um, so answers your question but we're gonna go ahead sorry about the Sun we'll go ahead and get you guys uh, set up on the tripod I'm gonna go ahead and edge these two yards mow weed eat blow go and we'll be done for the weekend three yards yards at three inches I got the deck at two and a half inches for the field that we just did this morning uh, so I'm gonna show you guys how to raise this deck it's real easy chain uh, choke throttle speed off maybe choke off pressure off pull the pin and go one hole down and now I'm at three inches one two three four one two three four on a little graph three inches that's it too easy three inches is a nice height for the customer 
so it looks nice and cut um, but it's not too too short that it's hurting the grass but ideally centipede lawns want to be around four inches but then the customers complain that it's too tall
So why did I cut all the way to the neighbor's cars? Because once a month we're doing that yard now. And so it's only going to make it easier for me next time to not have this growth so much. I already pissed through one battery. I'm on the second battery for this camera, which is why I keep buying these Sony Action Cam AS20s. They're inexpensive. And now I have three batteries that I can switch between. Um, so here's the deal. I got all the backyards and side yards and everything's done. You saw me cut the front yard, but now we're just gonna buzz through this front yard here. Weedy, blow, and go. So let's get on it. clippings a lot of wet clippings blow it out onto the asphalt that hot black asphalt with the sun beating it'll dry those up and when I'm done mowing and weed eating when I go to blow that it'll be dry powder and you can just blow it right into the grass
gonna go ahead and blow off now. I'll start with this yard and I'll bring it on down and then uh, we'll finish off over there and I'll show you those clippings that were soaking wet in the street. couple nice looking yards for the weekend like I said these were due yesterday uh, but I was kind of tired after work it's been a long week an exhaustive week I'm really super tired uh, but now I was refreshed showed you my Fitbit we got some good rest last night um, and I really needed it I needed to just chill with the air conditioning yesterday because um, like every day with my Fitbit like I showed you guys Okay, so we are recording back to my screen. Let me lower this down some. Open up my Fitbit real quick. And it says that we did 8.26 miles today of activity. And then when you look at the heart rate pull up today, it shows you that we did two hours and 19 minutes of fat burn activity. And then if you open up the chart, the chart shows you we were around 86 beats per minute, uh, probably averaged more like uh, 90 and we went up as high as 98 to 99 beats per minute, roughly. Uh, so that's how the Fitbit works. Two hours, 19 minutes of fat burn this morning. No Velky required, good exercise. Let's go home, we'll get this edited up real quick. Give me one second. Home sweet home. Oh, man, after a hard day of, si oh, it's kind of dark. After a hard day of side hustling. Hey, Dad. What's up? Can we, what are we gonna have to learn? Man, get off my back. You ain't yesterday.